Today I'm going to be talking about communication options for preppers in an SHTF situation and I'm going to be showing you a variety of radios that you could possibly use for short to medium range communications. Short to medium range being around your local neighbourhood so you would expect these radios to work for a couple of miles up to potentially 10 miles if you have line of sight. So let's talk about this radio. Here in the UK we have a license free band called PMR446 and this is standardised throughout Europe. However the radios are virtually the same as FRS radios apart from the fact that they use different frequencies. The problem with this type of radio is that it has a limited power output of half a watt and it also has a fixed antenna meaning you cannot unscrew this antenna and replace it with a better one or with a mobile antenna for example. Generally these radios aren't super rugged however you can get certain models that are made to be quite rugged. Now one thing about this radio that could be considered a good point or a bad point is that it has this standard type of battery that you can easily find. Now this can be a good thing because they're easily replaceable but it also can be a bad thing having this type of battery because they usually don't last as long as the lithium ion batteries used in the other radios that I'm going to be showing you in a minute. So here is the next radio that I'm going to be showing you which is a very common radio in the prepping world. This is the Baofeng UV5R and I'm sure you've seen numerous videos on it already. Some preppers have been saying that this is probably the ultimate prepping radio but actually I don't agree with them at all. This radio is a good radio but it's not waterproof. It doesn't have excellent RF performance characteristics and it's not the most rugged radio ever either. However it is still a step up from this type of radio because it doesn't have a limited power output which means that instead of being limited to half a watt this type of radio can do around 5 watts and there are even high power versions of this radio that can do around 8 watts. Another advantage is the antenna which you can unscrew and you can connect the radio either to a mobile antenna on the top of your car which will extend the range or you can connect it to another antenna like this one here which is an extendable antenna which should also help you get a better range. Another reason why you might want to use a radio like this as opposed to a radio like this is because it has a frequency mode or what they call a frequency mode which is where you can hit this button and go on to the frequencies and choose any frequency you like. Now this is not actually legal to do in peacetime however in an SHTF situation nobody's really going to care what frequency you're transmitting on unless you're stepping on someone else. With this radio there's only a set number of channels that you can use and they can easily be picked up by someone on let's say a scanner like this radio over here this is a scanner and they could easily listen in to you. Now it is still possible for a scanner user to listen into this radio very easily in fact however it is just slightly more difficult than with a license free radio because the license free radios only have a certain set number of channels and the scanner would only have to scan let's say 8 or 14 channels or however many there are with this radio they would have to search the whole frequency range to find out which frequency exactly you're on the benefit of being able to transmit on UHF or VHF with this radio is that you can choose the band which is most suited to the situation you're currently in. So the next step up from a radio like the Baofeng UV5R is something like this, the TYT MD380. Now this radio is actually only available on one band you have to pick which band you want. You can choose VHF or UHF whereas this Baofeng can do both VHF and UHF in one radio. However the advantage this radio has is that it does digital mode. On this radio the form or the standard of digital that it uses is called DMR 
and basically what you need to know is that a radio has to be the same standard as the radio it wants to communicate with. So if you have a DMR radio, you can only talk to other DMR radios. If you have a P25 radio, you can only talk to other P25 radios. However, this can still do FM mode, so it can still talk to this radio and to this radio. And in FM mode, it can still be listened to on the scanner. However, if you switch to digital mode, it makes it a lot harder for the scanner to listen in because most scanners don't have DMR as a mode that they can listen to. Let me give you a demonstration of that. If I were to talk on this radio on a digital channel and the scanner is set up on the same channel, let's see what it sounds like. This is a digital test, one, two, three, four, five. So as you could see, the scanner could not actually understand anything that doesn't mean it's impossible to listen into these radios because it's still possible to use computer software to listen in and there are certain other devices that can be used to listen in but they aren't very widespread and using digital is going to increase your voice security by a massive amount compared to just using analog FM so these two radios use lithium-ion batteries which means that they will probably last longer than the batteries in this radio but the disadvantage of it is that the battery is radio specific so you can't take the battery out of this radio for example and put it into that radio none of the radios that I've shown you so far have been rated as waterproof which means that they are not guaranteed to work if you take them out in the rain now, most of them probably will work anyway in rain, but it's not really a risk that I'd like to take, especially in an SHTF situation, which is why I prefer to use radios like this Motorola here, which is also a DMR radio, so it can talk to this radio. Uh, but this radio is fully waterproof, so you can actually take this radio for a swim and it'll still be fine. So we've talked about the voice security of digital radios being much better than that of analog radios but if you want to really stop other people from listening into your communications then you have to use encryption which is actually much easier to do on these digital radios than it is on analog radios in fact on these two radios it's not possible to use encryption at all over here I've got another Motorola radio which is similar to this one but it's a newer radio and these are both set up on the same channel with the same information as well as the TYT but these radios have the same encryption key in and the TYT doesn't so when you have this encryption key set up in these radios then no other radio that doesn't have the encryption key should be able to understand them. I'm going to demonstrate that now. So if I talk on this radio and I'm going to transmit to the other Motorola, then it should come through perfectly well. This, this is an encrypted, is an encrypted test call. call. One, two, One, two three, four, three, four, five. However, if I did the same thing again, but with the TYT's volume turned up instead, this is an encrypted test call. One, two, three, four, five. So now, using the encryption key in these two radios, even another DMR radio cannot understand what they're saying. But the problem with these commercial radios is that you can't program them in the field as you can with something like this. On this radio you can just select the frequency yourself and start talking on it and you can set the CTCSS and DCS as well if you want to. On this radio you can partially program it from the front panel. You can program it completely on analog channels from the front panel but on digital channels you can't do certain things and these two radios you can't really program much at all from the front panel. So you have to rely on the programming software to set up your channels before you use the radios in the field. So in this video we've talked about a range of radios from the most basic and 
cheapest radios all the way up to the most expensive which is these digital radios that are also rugged and from a well-known and well-respected manufacturer and i think that these two radios or radios like these are the type of radio that you should choose for your shtf communications for the following two reasons number one is voice security you could be saying anything from where your food is stockpiled to where an enemy is and you don't want other people to be able to hear that and the second reason number two is because these radios are a lot more rugged than all of the other radios and you can take them underwater you can drop them they won't break easily i've seen this particular model really bashed up it looked like it had been dragged through rubble on a building site and it was still working perfectly well so thank you for watching this video i hope you found it useful Feel free to leave a comment telling me what you thought, and if you did find it useful, don't forget to click the like button.